good morning and here we are in the west of Scotland and as you can see we've had some colder weather overnight and the wind isn't blowing and it's not raining so it's uh, it's a kind of an unusual day here because it's been horrific uh, for the last few weeks and I've been shooting in here this morning uh, doing details of all the frost and ice around the seaweed around the little stones uh, photographing uh, seaweed under the ice and it's just been a really fascinating couple of hours because what we're doing is we're finding interesting engaging subjects in the most anonymous uh, insignificant place you could ever look I mean, I'm surrounded by mountains forests lochs and rivers uh, there's snow on the hill it's a glorious day and I could be off shooting big dramatic landscapes I suppose but I've chosen instead to spend my time with this and I think that's a significant point is that we can find beauty in the most innocent of places uh, so yeah we've been in here this morning and it's been incredibly enjoyable so let's get back to the office and we'll spend some time with some of the images and do some processing and see what we can make out of all this good afternoon now this is me back in the office and um, you can see uh, I've just selected four of the frames that I took this morning uh, on the icy shoreline there and as you can see you know they're 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 kind of um, they're they're complicated but they're simple at the same time uh, and personally for me uh, you know that I shoot an awful lot in the square format so these are cropped in camera um, it's just something I do because I, I like squares it's as simple as that and I think there's something about squares that allows you to produce a selection of images that that feels harmonious straight from the start um, now something there's a couple of things I want to talk about during the processing uh, situation here the first is is that I see very much geometrically I'm constantly thinking about geometry and if we take this one as an example you can see here that there's a strong diagonal line that comes right through the frame and it creates a separation between the bottom area of, uh, the bottom right area of the frame and the top left area of the frame the other thing that separates these is colour with the very warm, rich uh, leaves uh, on the top left hand side and then the cooler, frosty uh, seaweed on the bottom right hand side. And what we have there is uh, we have geometry that's creating this transition and we have these lines where everything on the bottom here seems to move up to the top left. Uh, and what that's allowing us to do is basically subdivide this frame into very uh, geometric shapes and patterns. Uh, so if I develop this particular image, it doesn't need very much. Uh, typically, we've already got a fairly uh, broad spectrum here. We've got uh, already we've got some clipping in the shadows because you know it was it was quite early in the morning uh, and the frost is obviously quite bright so we've got a full dynamic range here so we don't need to do terribly much to this uh, typically I I do darken images to start off with just because I think they get a little overexposed uh, when you're when you're uh, recording them in camera uh, and adding contrast by illuminating the whites uh, so darkening the exposure and uh, adding luminosity with the white slider I've opened the blacks a little I, I don't mind a little bit of clipping and if I turn off the J key it certainly doesn't look uh, problematic now the thing that's going to be important with this image is we can either keep the frost white uh, which is perfectly fine uh, but that means we need the, there's some warm tones in the seaweed they're still kind of brownish um, and I do like the leaves here. If we use the blue saturation slider in camera calibration, see what happens when I move the saturation up. The leaves, I'll, I'll move it all the way to the right. All those warm tones have been saturated more because we're saturating the blue component out of the RGB color space. And if I then come in and cool the image a little bit, that's just going to make the frost feel colder. Uh, 
but now we've increased the warmth on the leaves and we've cooled the frost a little bit. So if we just do a, just a very quick before and after here, you can see the one on the left is kind of homogeneously warm, whereas the one on the right feels as if there's a transition because it's cooler on the bottom at the frosty side and the leaves are still retain some of that warmth. So that's fine. Images like this hardly need any processing at all. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is done. Uh, you know, there's there's nothing we need to do to this thing to 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 make it fancy or anything. It just is what it is, and I think that's important. So um, let's have another look at another example. So if we look at this one, it's this is a far more simple composition in many ways. Uh, the cracks in the ice have become the kind of subdividing space uh, situation. And again, I don't think we need to do terribly much, but what we do need to do is create contrast uh, because we want these uh, as much detail to come out of this ice as possible. So if I darken the image again to start off with, increase the whites until we get a little bit of clipping. Uh, with the J key on, we can go to about there. If I pull down the highlights now, that will get me a little bit more contrast in those highlights. And I'm just going to add some texture, just globally some add some texture. And again, the color of this is going to be absolutely critical. If we use the neutral white balance here. So this is basically saying that we're looking for something that's a neutral grey. That can be quite a useful starting off point. And if I then cool it from there, we can introduce that kind of nice, cold, icy look, uh, which I find quite attractive. So I'm just going to go for that. And I think I'm just going to brighten this a touch generally overall. It was getting a little bit on the dark side because we want it to feel sparkly. Uh, and the best way for it to feel, feel sparkly is to keep it bright. So that's two images that we've processed so far. The similarity with all of these images is that they require very little processing. If I do something a little bit different with this one, so let's darken it right down. Um, now, I don't have a plan in mind when I start processing. I very much just like to um, let it talk to me and see how it feels. Um, so again, creating contrast creates impact. Uh, the more contrast you have, the typically the greater impact you have. You'll see what happens if I just pull up the vibrance slider, just a tiny touch, 18 points, and it's increased the impact of the image significantly. If I just double click on the word vibrance and take it out, and that vibrance disappears again, it's lost impact. So realistically, vibrance and saturation, all of these things are just kind of impact sliders. Now, the more impact we give this thing, the more complicated it gets in many ways, because all the bits are vying with each other to, to create um, or to compete with each other. So it's a case of being a little bit sensitive to uh, the overall feel of the thing. Again, that blue saturation slider in the calibration is a great way of creating some punch in those warmer tones without completely oversaturating the whole image. And yeah, I mean, I'm just generally reasonably happy with that. And again, the one on the left you can see is quite homogeneously warm, uh, whereas the one on the right, there feels like there's more contrast between the cool and the warm tones. And by creating contrast and a transition between uh, different things, then we're creating impact and engagement. Um, so yeah, you know, I think uh, in terms of a little morning's work, uh, I'm generally quite happy with these. Uh, I haven't looked at this one, so let's just very quickly come in again. And this one, you we might want to look at contrast in a different way. So, because there's a lot of shine on this, if we if we make it all too bright, 
So we're basically here, we want to increase contrast in another way. I don't want to use luminosity uh, in the whites or things like that, but I can use luminance in color channels. So if I increase the yellow and the orange there, and if we turn that on and off, you can see I've increased the brightness, but just by increasing those orange tones. And again, if I use this blue primary, you can see that is also going to increase the luminosity. Any way that we can increase luminosity works. Yeah. Now, by avoiding using any of the highlights, shadows, whites channels here, then we're avoiding creating lots of glary flare with these uh, brighter edges. If you'll see if I do increase that, that's not too bad. You just gotta know when to stop. But I think it was mid-tone brightness was something we wanted to avoid. I can take some of the shadows down. I kind of like the highlights there, so that's fine. And again, I'm gonna use my temperature to control the overall feel uh, by cooling it somewhat. That's, um, so there we go. I hope you enjoy these images. I certainly had a fun time.